Okay, so to continue in the scriptures and with the 1769 King James Version Bible, that's the Bible translated from the original Hebrew and Greek scriptures into the English language, modern English language. Um, this contains all the books of the Bible as well, all the books of the Heavenly Father that he gathered. So now it's Ecclesiastes 26. I'm going to read a scripture real quick because a lot of our women that going through, you know, we're behind enemy lines. So we're still the oppressed and the slaves. And our people are leaning on their own understanding, being deceived by Satan or thinking on their own, hey, if I get money, then this oppression, this suffering is going to go away or it's going to improve. And we have to get our mind right first. That's why the greatest commandment is to love the Heavenly Father with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. That's the first and great commandment. When we read in Matthew 22, verse 36, down to about verse 38. Because we have to get our mind right. Because you look at our people. Look at a lot of brothers. You have um, a young brother that plays basketball. Um, and um, he was appearing in the news a lot because he was on social media with a gun. And hypocritically, they're saying, oh, that'll be a bad example. So we have to fine and punish you. While on the other hand, promoting... Um, you know, um, the what is it, the Fourth Amendment, whatever amendment it is, that the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment, I believe. So, so, you know, if a Caucasian, you know, famous or not, has a gun, um, that is something, you know, that's positive. You had a whole bunch of Caucasians went to overthrow the White House um, and the House of Rep Representatives, literally, and they only are punishing a few of them when they all had arms they all came there with death and killed the police but because they were caucasian so that's why we have to you have our people that are looking for justice from man instead of the heavenly father our heavenly father put us in this situation where there's all these contradictions and then when we leave you know um the battle the daily battle the daily grind of being behind enemy lines um, whether we're cool with people or not, that's still the nature of how we live. So we come home to try to escape within the refuge of our home from oppression. And then there's bickering between us and our women or our women naturally are following that mentality to be against us or have a lot of resentment for us because we're not giving them Ferraris for their 16th birthday because they're not really understanding how life is and how the Heavenly Father commands us to be. So regardless of the reasons, that resentment, that pride in coming against men is a fatal flaw. Not only is that not going to work and continue not to work for you sisters, whether you have a good job, whether you're a doctor for a little while, um, whatever situation you're in, whether all your bills are paid through the government and government programs, or you know, giving you money for single kids or you collect taxes once a year so you get a few thousand dollars, whatever your situation is, what you're going to see is that your life is going to be determined by scriptures. So that's why we urge you with all clarity to get yourself into the Bible and study it diligently. These are the type of scriptures in the Bible to give sisters understanding so you can turn from the things that's going to cause you to suffer and separately, the Heavenly Father is going to punish you. So this is Ecclesiasticus 26, verse 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. So ultimately, this world is chaotic. There's confusion. People don't know if they're coming, going or coming, if they're men or women. You have all, all these different lies that are constantly being communicated to destroy minds. So we cannot just listen and accept everything. We can give respect to everyone. We can treat them cordially. But to accept what they're saying or be moved by words that are contrary to the Bible, we have to learn the Bible so we know how to be stable, how to have a proper foundation, how to raise our children to determine and know what right from wrong is based on the Heavenly Father that created us, based on his word, based on his word.
So let's continue reading in Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 26. If you have just a King James Version Bible, it's an accurate translation, but it doesn't have all the books of the Bible. That's why we're using the 1769, okay? And you could also use, obviously, the 1611. It's just in Old English. So now let's start from the top again, Ecclesiastes 26, 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. So the women that are insulted in this world are called pick me's if they um, look to, to serve their husband or to show their husband love and consideration and kindness and think before they speak with him. The same thing they look for in a man. If a woman is also like that, the Heavenly Father says that she'll be judge wise of all. That woman before God distinguishes herself among all other women especially in a world where it's the opposite. And we're going to read the opposite and see why you shouldn't be opposite to what we just read. It says, so make sure that you honor your man or you have in mind, even if you're single or you've been in and out of relationships or left relationships, whatever your background story is, make sure that you start to implement these scriptures and the things that please the Heavenly Father and also please a man that you want to defend you with his life if there's danger. Men are, even a man that's not wise in the Bible, are, a lot of men are waking up and realizing, hey, I'm not going to throw away my life for a woman that's going to be having sex with my brother or my cousin. Or has a man she didn't tell me that she has. Or she's a lying, wicked woman, a manipulative woman. That's not, that's not a good woman nor is a man that has any understanding going to be seduced by a woman that has no other qualities except her sexuality. So make sure, fam, a woman that honoreth her husband shall be judge wise of all. So these are the type of scriptures you want to be teaching your young children, your young daughters, both the daughters and the sons to be able to know qualities that he should be looking for in a woman. And unfortunately, they are rarer and rarer every day because our people are backsliding. That's why women have basically usurped authority or while us men are battling the white man and everything else, instead of our women having our back, many of them were seduced by Satan through the window. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And and left us. So they're not seeing all these things that are happening that are actual reality. They're just looking at results. They're just looking at doing whatever comes to mind or whatever they hear in a TikTok video or whatever they hear on YouTube, whatever their aunt says. But when we actually hear who our creator, what he says, he lets us know that it's imperative, it's very important for you to honor your husband, to have that natural respect for your man or the man that you choose or the man that you will choose to be your head. And there's not another option. This is, if you don't do that, or you're a proud woman, you're a goddess, a man has to prove himself to you. Let's see what the Lord says about goddesses and divas or women that aren't going to submit to no man. They're going to be eating those words shortly. And before that time comes where you might not have a chance to, to repent, better hear this now. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. So the most wicked of all women are the women that dishonors their man in their pride. So a proudful woman, a, a woman full of pride that's uh, prideful and arrogant, especially when dealing with her men and especially dealing with our men, a woman with that type of nature is useless. Like the Lord said in Proverbs 11 and 22, that um, as a jewel in a swine's snout, so is a, so is a beautiful woman that is without discretion. So the same way it's useless to put a priceless jewel on a pig is the same way, even though a woman's beautiful, if she has no self-control, no discretion and wisdom, she, has, she doesn't know how to speak, when to speak, she doesn't care to speak. She's going to act a fool or look to fist fight a man and be crazy and demonic like that. That woman is worthless. Her beauty means nothing anymore. So that's why, sisters, make sure that you 
cultivate and grow in other good qualities through the scriptures. Make sure you add learning and understanding to your mind so that when you're looking for a man or dealing with men, whether you're aging or whether you're a young woman in her beauty and her youth, you, you can't, the, time goes fast. Women don't age the same way as men. Just look at reproductive ability. A man can have children in his 60s, 70s, as long as he's alive, he can have children or he has the ability to have children. But a woman, once she hits 40, once she starts in her mid 30s, they they actually have a name. Some women don't even know this. Some young women, um, geriatric pregnancy. Geriatric means someone that's very elderly. So even at an age where most women don't think, oh, I'm 35, I'm not even middle aged yet. Your body, your reproductive ability, one of the, the, the greatest blessing and power that you have as a woman to bring forth life, it doesn't make you a goddess. Animals that are female can reproduce too. So just on that, being a female alone doesn't give you cause to exalt yourself. Just like it doesn't give men cause to exalt themselves. We need works. We need to be good. We can't just say we're men and you guys cop and women copying men. Oh yeah, if a man sleep around with a woman, they say he's cool. But if a woman do it, they call her a hoe. Yeah, women and men are not the same. And we were showing it earlier that because many women benefit from men and women not being the same, especially in a wicked world to deceive you, you have many women that love the dual standards or the, the advantages that they get for being female. You get pulled over for speeding. You cry or, you, oh, my goodness, I don't know. I was rushing. I don't feel good. It's the time of the month. The, the police aren't going to hear that. They'll be yanking me through the broken window, uh, talking about, you know, whatever emotions I have typically. But women automatically get um, sort of preferential treatment from men, even when it's not their man. And you like that. And that is a benefit for women. We're not mad at that. That's when women are in the right mindset, supposed to be that way. So it's not just men ruling because of their strength. It's everyone is benefiting. Love is going both ways, even from strangers. But that pact has been broken because women now, through Satan, have power over men. It's not equal. A woman can hit a man and call the police and get that man arrested. She can have a husband or a man and they're together and she can say, that man raped me. She can be lying. They can be in the middle of intimacy and she say no, because she has so many demons, she can't even fu function in a loving moment. So sisters in that mindset have to get fixed, have to fix the trauma and fix their, their battles from picking the wrong men that they chose. Whatever situations, if they were raped by wicked uncles or wicked family members, they can't hold all men accountable. They have to fix that because if they take that into the market of meeting men, if they take that into society, they're damaged. They're not going to do anything except damage themselves, make bad choices, make um, choices to abort children, to murder children for selfish reasons. Ah, I'm not ready to be a mom. Ah, ah, that's going to cost me money. I'm not going to be able to go to Dubai. We have to get out of this world's ways and valuing things that we see and hear, especially our sisters. I'm not saying that the men are corrupt. We got the brothers. You got to get yourselves, women. You got to hear righteous correction from our almighty heavenly father, just like our brothers and us men have to also. But where our job is to oversee you. And before you snap or throw an ax at your computer or at your cell phone hearing this, realize that the other nations, even though they're deceived by Satan in this world, our people are in some ways the most deceived. Because when you look at the so-called Arabs, the so-called Asians, when you look at the so-called East Indians, you don't have their women outside of the United States speaking against them in the way that they do not saying that all women are righteous and all women are the only ones that need to repent we're saying that we have to be the examples as righteous men and righteous women and our women are having a lot of experience in what like the lord said but she that dishonor dishonoreth him and her pride shall be counted ungodly of all this is ecclesiasticus this is the same bible 
This is the 1769 King James Version Bible. A woman that dishonors, you're comfortable dishonoring men, getting in a man's face, even if he's not your man or whether he is or isn't, that's grossly inappropriate. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And what, what men like it, he'll eat the fruit thereof. Like whatever you like, you, you, you want to be wise and walk in wisdom and control your mouth, man or woman, you're going to be not putting yourself in dangerous and deadly situations. But a lot of our women are kind of free to do what they want. And they're making horrible choices with that freedom because that's freedom that they're getting from sin and Satan. That's not freedoms that they have in virtue. That's not freedoms that a woman will have by dealing righteously with the Lord. They are liberal. They're liberal with their body. They're liberal with their womb. They'll sleep with a man that they would never marry. And oops, they got pregnant. So now uh, abortion's on the table, all this madness. So we have to repent. And that's why we're exhorting our sisters to repent. It breaks our heart to see our sisters going through the sufferings that they're going through. Or seeing our women missing or murdered because they're free and they're always out. They're busybodies that the scriptures speak against when we read in 1 Timothy 5. So there is an exact correlation. There's an, a, an exact relation between our women breaking the commandments and all the different ways they're suffering, including the wicked men that they're choosing or choosing a man that's not wicked or abusive or manipulative and then feeling that that man is beneath her or he doesn't make enough money. You know, prioritizing money and wealth above the quality of a man. If he's a man of understanding, if he's a man that's gonna be loyal and be there for you if you get sick, if you get in a car accident, if you have to go through cancer treatments, if you start losing your hair, if you gain weight, even though it's not your intention, you know, whatever the case may be, you want a loyal man. But these qualities, all women talk about a man's sexual prowess, and they talk about his bank, if he has money, what kind of car does he have? What does he work? Where does he live? You have a big house? So that warped way of thinking, that is a cancer that's among our people. That's great sin and our people, examples of our women being so lost. So um, a lot of our women too, they don't want to admit any wrongdoing. And they're not alone. Our brothers don't like to admit wrongdoing. That's why you have a lot of our men and women that are going through a, a, a life that's unlivable because they suffer so much. And then every choice they make to either escape that suffering brings more punishment, more suffering, more sin. So make sure that you're able to hear this word. Make sure you go on your knees and ask the Heavenly Father for mercy. Pray to the Heavenly Father. And according to the Bible, we're supposed to pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of Christ, the biblical Jesus Christ, not a cross <clears throat> or any other idols. Not a star of David, not a black Christ, but the biblical Jesus Christ was also a black man, but we can't have images of the biblical Jesus Christ. Any image that we associate with the Heavenly Father or anything that man's hands made and we associate with the Heavenly Father or Christ, those are examples of idolatry. So um, Deuteronomy 4, 15 and 16 speaks to that and many other scriptures, Exodus chapter 20, verse 22 and 23. So now we're at Proverbs 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. So make sure that even if you get upset, that's just Satan in the spirit of variance and your pride working in you to not want to be correct. So we have to get out of that mindset and make sure that we stay in the word. Man or woman. It's not only men that have to fix themselves. And again, we have to fix ourselves to the standard the Heavenly Father establishes and has established in the Bible. We don't answer to our women. Because when we serve the Lord, we're going to please God and men and especially our women. But not because we have a big house. You can be, you know, when you look at actual righteous men, the majority of righteous men throughout our history are forefathers that were actually servants of the Heavenly Father. You know, David, Samson, Gideon, Moses, the biblical Jesus Christ, we weren't, they weren't wealthy. You know, Abraham started off very meek and poor. 
so we have to get out of money determining if a man is good or high value. But a man has to work unless, you know, he's disabled and then, you know, he collects disability or something like that. But if a man doesn't have a sickness or illness temporarily or permanently, he needs to be working. Like God said in 2 Timothy, um, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 8, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't deserve to eat. And we all need to eat to live. So obviously us men have to work so that we're able to take care of a woman if we have, even if we just have a little bit. We don't need a fancy car, a mansion, drop top, stretch this. No, we don't need a limo to be a good man. So make sure, fam, that you start to understand these words and apply them. Um, hey, bro, you have some some other things that you want to speak about, my man? Um, no, no, good points you brought out. I didn't have anything in particular else that I wanted to speak about. No, I got you. Um, we can pause in the scriptures for a moment because even though, you know, the word has to be shared to those so that they understand, you know, that the scriptures speak to the things that we're suffering because they may just be seeing their suffering. They just may, may be seeing what they don't like in men or what they were told not to like in, in brothers and men rather than what the Heavenly Father shows, you know, the Heavenly Father gives us true judgment. He, for how men should judge a woman and based on what standards, not their personal preferences only, but mainly the things that we're reading. Like the Lord said, if a woman, if there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her voice, then is not her husband as other men. And that's Ecclesiastes 36, 23. Because a lot of women that are sincere, they say, well, you know, we can't trust men or why do men lead? First of all, you have to choose a wise man because if not, he's damaged and destroyed, may have been molested. He got a lot of things going on in his brain. So overseeing a woman with all the challenges and requirements of a man that that entails, many women aren't going to be able to handle it. You know, they're not going to be able to handle having to be a mother to a man or nurture him at that level when they're broken and damaged. Nor is it a woman's job to heal a man at that level. She's a comfort to him. She's a help to him, but she can't guide him. He had a mother when he was little. We can't have a mother. We have to guide our woman. We have to be her father if she didn't have one. We have to be the Lord on the earth to guide her and protect her with our life as the Lord gave his life for us. So we have to learn how to be so that we are worthy to be followed. We are worthy to be submitted to. But you have a lot of our women talking like that, minus the scriptures, as if they're above us, because as the scriptures say, the Lord allowed this new thing to happen, that a woman would compass a man, that basically now the roles are reversed. And then with women teaching the boys or not teaching the boys how to be men, because they can't, you have a, a generation of men that are even more lost than the lost men that had them. And especially if those men aren't around, they don't even have a masculine figure. So even their voice might be a little high pitched because they're going to be like their mom. They're going to laugh like their mom. They're going to make gestures and movements like their mom. And not everything is evil. It's just that there's going to be many breakdowns and each family is going to be a different trauma or breakdown when there's only a mother overseeing the house. So once we understand that, then we know that being a single mother is not a viable option. The only time a woman should be a single mother is if she's a widow. That's it. When we read in the scriptures, that's when women, especially virtuous women, that's when they were single mothers, when they were a widow. And then the scriptures acknowledge in 1 Timothy 5 that you're going to have situations where a woman, whether she's an actual widow or she's a single woman with a child, she has that widow type of mentality because she's alone because she hasn't she doesn't know how to submit to a man or or, or find right men because she doesn't have understanding. So the goal is definitely to move away from how we are or the wicked messages that Satan is pumping into our, our people day and night. You're giving them a computer or cartoons to watch to be their babysitter 
So you can exhale after work or exhale after smoking or whatever it is that you're doing that you shouldn't. And we have to fix ourselves because your children, you could tell them not to smoke or you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't snort coke. You shouldn't do the things that I do. They're going to follow your example. They're going to follow your words the same way you follow words of people on social media or bad advice. But now it's time to follow good counsel and good advice that comes from the Bible. Um, bro, what's something that you notice that you've maybe shared with your wife that you'd want to share with other sisters that you see maybe a lot of women also need to learn some of the things that they haven't been taught by their men or men, they haven't been taught by their fathers or grandfathers. So what's something that you would like to impart to our sisters and our family so that they know these words, even if they come off strong, they're the Heavenly Father's words. That's why they come off strong. We have to submit to them too. These words aren't, we don't get to teach the word and not do it. So we're a work in progress, but we're repenting daily and turning ourselves away from how we were and how, what world we were in, that old man, and putting on our new man. So what's something that you would suggest from what you've seen or what you're observing, or even the scriptures and, and sound doctrine going out now, what's something that you would like to say or just add, or maybe scripture came to mind? Sure. Um, something that I share with my wife that I see all of us, including many of our sisters, need to do is to have a renewed mind daily. Um, it's important to not conform to the ways of this world, their thoughts and their programs. For instance, um, I met a lot of, I heard a different type of conversation throughout sisters and um, that have a professional career. And one thing that's in their mind that's stuck in their mentality is that if they're working just like a man can work, then they don't have to do responsibilities of a woman um they will have to share those responsibilities or they can have the same authority as a man since they also are bringing home money or working 40 hours a week and i have heard this from our sisters um so this not this not fake this is reality in the mindset of many women and how can a sister joined to Christ if their minds are not separated from the ways of this world by renewing their minds and staying only in the Bible and letting the scriptures teach us the righteous examples and let the Lord direct our steps. So that's that's something that um I share what I see in the world that can trap our sisters also share those things with my house, including my wife and my children. Right. No, that's that's an excellent point, bro. That's an excellent point because, um, you know, for brothers that, you know, maybe have studied at colleges and universities or, you know, got, um, you know, higher learning, as they refer to it, once you finish high school and you go on to college or um, get further educated, um, to be able to qualify for, you know, maybe better paying jobs or, or you know, other industries. Um, one of the things that many sisters, like you said, they, they, they're conflicted because they're already following wickedness. So, so they have to actually change to be able to understand and perceive and open up themselves to learn a different way, which is righteousness. They don't want to just learn a different way. Oh, I was heterosexual and I would be homosexual. No. You want to learn different ways. And what the more that you apply yourself as a woman, the Heavenly Father is going to open up, you know, opportunities, righteous ones, you know, honest, um, I would say um, uh, honest, uh, you know, honest labors. Like you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing work that you're going to be getting money for, but it's honorable. It's something that's blameless. It's not something where people can accuse you. It's not something where someone late at night after you leave at three, four in the morning, it's going to be following you home and you have to take a different route or call the police on the way home or a friend that's a policeman. You're, you're going you're gonna to have a peace of mind that your current state of life and the way that you live and the sins that you 
probably don't know that you're committing. The pride that you have that you don't realize that with all the fighting that you're doing and the struggles that you've had and, you know, living in the street and having different men holler at you at every corner, it, you, you, you figure the way to counteract that, the way to repel that is to be harder, to be aggressive and or copy men that you see successful that are aggressive or violent. It's not going to work for them and it's not going to work for you. Yes, there's times when a man has to defend his life and be ready to even take a life to protect himself or protect his loved ones if they're being robbed or, you know, carjacked or something like that. But that's not, that can't be your default. That can't be your nature. And much less for a woman, because a woman's nature isn't to be that hardened. That's why a lot of our sisters, they have high blood pressure. They're getting all types of diseases. Their body's breaking down is the point. So many sisters, I'm middle-aged. I look at the sisters that, you know, and our women age better than probably all other nations' women. Yet our women are, are have so much of a load that they're carrying that they're they're overwhelmed. And then they try to escape. They see grandma, you know, at 32, or grandma at 32, that she, she has grandkids already at 39, 35. Things are getting worse and worse. Not that women having children at a young age is the worst thing at you know at 18 19 it's not the worst thing not at all if they have the right foundation if they have the right house if they have christ and in, in in spirit and truth but by not being that way they're lacking understanding they have the maturity of a 70 year old when it comes to sexual things but the mindset of a four-year-old when it comes to more other needful things in life whether they're 40, whether they're 30, whether they're 16, 18, whatever. So we have to renew the spirit of our mind, like the scriptures say, and like the brother was bringing out, that we, we can't be thinking money is the only way out or wealth, or that you can't be a wife because you have to work. So then everybody has to cook. Like you, you get to still insist or depend on your husband to do the duties of, of a man, whether he's tired, has a headache, works two jobs, he still has certain duties he has to perform as a man with his woman and in the house and everything else. But then the woman, she gets to, because she works as every other human, she now, uh, okay, I didn't want to be at home. I want to go work. Okay. Well, if you have to work, you still have to do the duties at home. So you have to have the right mind or you're not going to be able to keep a man, especially a good man. Read the, let's read this scripture. This is Proverbs 31 and 10 to just bring out the point that you have to be more diligent. You can't be lazy. You can't give five or 10% of a woman's qualities that's a good woman and expect a man to give 100% or 120% or something like that. And that's the way the world is because again, in this new world where Satan is controlling people, including our women, Many women want everything and give little or nothing and are getting more hardened in that to their own hurt and to the destruction of relationships and families. And then any man that has a brain is not going to want a woman like that, no matter what she looks like. And replace that mindset with this scripture and learning the, the scriptures, period. That's how you renew your mind and the spirit of your mind. This is Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So a virtuous woman is not common. Females are common. There are even more females in the earth than men. But especially among our women, a good woman is something to be treasured. Every woman wants to be treasured as if she's a good woman. But brothers, let the most high guide you. Don't let a woman tell you her standards. Follow what the most high says and then see a woman that's virtuous. Not a woman that tells you she's virtuous. Not a woman that wants good quality. Good, she wants the treatment of as if she's a virtuous woman, but she's not a virtuous woman. Let's continue. So, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Can't trust a woman if she's not virtuous. She's a promiscuous woman. She's a lying woman. She's manipulative. Anytime you ask her something, she doesn't want to answer. She answers a question with a question. You have to start to learn to discern and judge 
the actual qualities of a good virtuous woman and the qualities that many women exhibit, which is wicked and deceitful. You have to be careful because you can't safely trust in a woman. And when she's a virtuous woman, you can then trust her more. Let's continue. It says, so that he have no need of spoil. So when a man has a good woman, material things are less important to him because she's a good woman. So she values the man more than what um, material things he has. That's also a quality of a virtuous woman. And the Lord will bless her to get more things if it won't corrupt her and she can handle it. So let's continue. So this is verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So biblically, a woman that's a good woman or a woman that's focused on her husband and kids, she's not a lazy, barefoot and pregnant woman. She's, over, she's caring about her home and her family and doing her duties as a wife and also works this is a virtuous woman this from proverbs 31 from verse 10 down to verse 31 are all the different characteristics that a good woman has in the past and today so it doesn't mean that if you have a career or you have a job that now your your duties as a wife now takes a back seat no you you have to do both can't be lazy, barefoot, and pregnant. Or if I choose a man that I can't work, you got to support me. No, you guys got to work together. We're in captivity. We're not the so-called white man that stole everything from everyone. And now everybody is now struggling. It's starting with our people. Don't have a homeland anymore. They're in our homeland, Israel. Our blood brothers in Babylon, the great America, they don't have their homeland, the so-called Native Americans. So we have to make sure that we have the right standards. We have the right mindset. Okay. And work on virtue, work, work on renewing your mind by the scriptures. So when you as a man choose a woman and you as a sister, you're looking for a good man or you have a good man or you have a man that's working and trying to be better. You're there to help him. You're there to show him love as commanded. And you showing him that respect. That's proving that you're wiser than any other woman. You're among the wise women, whether you went to university or not. And all honor, praises, and glory to our almighty heavenly father, through his word in our life, the biblical Jesus Christ, who's also the Bible. So get away from religions and groups and Israelite groups. Stay in the Bible, beloved fam and brethren in Israel, period. Make sure you stay in the Bible only. All right. Holy hugs and peace.